The following webinar is presented by the eExtension Farm Energy Community of Practice at extension.org and the University of Nebraska Lincoln Extension. Thank you for joining us on this wonderful Friday in July. Uh, our speaker today is going to be uh, Milt Geiger from the University of Wyoming Extension. Uh, Mr. Geiger has uh, been working on energy alternatives and energy efficiency there uh, in extension for the University of Wyoming for a number of years. And, uh, and he and, and Sarah Hamlin from Montana State have been putting together a curriculum and a uh, set of resources that I, I find interesting and useful and, and uh, would like to get some more exposure to it. So I invited him to come on and, and talk to us about that today. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Milt Geiger. All right. Well, thank you, John. And before I get started, I would certainly be remiss if I didn't uh, credit my uh, colleague, Sarah Hamlin, out of Montana State University Extension. And she was really the driving force behind initiating the uh, Exploring Energy Efficiency and Alternatives curriculum, uh, affectionately known as E3A. I have to throw another acronym out there. And it is really a curriculum designed to engage uh, Extension faculty uh, in energy education. And I should note that it was funded by Western SARE. Some of you may be familiar with your uh, Sustainable Agriculture Research and Education grant. And this was funded originally by a professional development uh, grant. So I certainly want to acknowledge Western SARE for their contribution to this. So what are we going to address today? Ever so briefly, why it was created, what is it, and then how you can access it. If you find that there are some useful items here, even if there's just pieces you want to go after, how can you get at it? And that's one of the things we really wanted to open up here is allow it to be uh, shared. Because we do recognize that both Montana State and the University of Wyoming have relatively limited uh, expertise and uh, resources when it comes to energy. So we find that when we're able to share it and collaborate with other institutions, the effectiveness of the programs that we can deliver is enhanced as well. OK, ever so briefly, what is the purpose of E3A? And we really are seeking to allow educators, be it field educators or sometimes campus uh, specialists, to address energy. Now, we started with a needs assessment. There is actually some fairly rigorous academic look at this uh, from a survey of how educators wanted to teach energy. And then actually Sarah did her, uh, some of her graduate work related to energy education in extension. But we recognize that we start with extension educators that come from a variety of backgrounds. Uh, if you ask someone, for instance, I come from a background in agricultural economics, and if you sent me out to talk about range, I could probably hold a five-minute intelligent conversation and then be hopelessly lost. And we recognize that many of our educators would come from a background which is quite a bit different from uh, energy discussion. So we wanted to recognize and acknowledge that we're starting at different, uh, at different levels of formal education that we need to integrate this with existing educational work. Uh, when folks are out uh, creating new programming, recognizing that there's time constraints, and we assume that everybody already has a full-time job. So we just didn't want to stack something else on there. Realize that we wanted to find places where it could integrate into things that they're doing already. And then also the idea that we need a standardized curriculum in the fact that, hey, we've got something. We can keep it current. We make sure that somebody doesn't uh, begin to deviate into uh, one realm of advocacy or, or another and be able to keep it current and relevant for our educators and for the ultimately for our clients. So there we are. E3A is going to try, is equipping our, our educators to complete energy education at the local level. We're really designed to take this out from the ivory tower of the university and get it in the hands of extension educators, conservation districts, uh, other folks with USDA, particularly NRCS, and allow them to engage in energy education. OK, so what's in there? Uh, this is what we've got right now. So it is broken down. You'll see on the right there, it does come in an attractive uh, cardboard box. And uh, by the way, we picked cardboard because if we figured if we picked something you know, nice and plastic, people would probably dump the folders out and turn it into a tackle box or something like that. That's a lesson of experience from uh, previous efforts, particularly by the University of Wyoming. But we have uh, a user guide and programming materials. So it starts you out with uh, a map and some general energy information. Uh, uh, in, in, excuse me, some general energy information, some programming resource, and there's also a lot of online resources, particularly PowerPoints, links, blogs, podcasts, uh, ever-increasing number of videos. We're trying to add to this as we go. 
But the core grant did create seven technology folders where we focused on specific renewable energy technologies. And you can see that all of these were focused with an ag bent. But we recognize that the homestead is oftentimes a critical part of uh, agriculture. So the folders are relevant directly to ag, but also to non-ag producers as well. And we honed in on microhydroelectric, small wind, solar electric, photovoltaic, excuse me, solar uh, electric photovoltaics, solar hot water, uh, biodiesel, anaerobic digesters, and wood heat. So you can see, as we're on a Bioenergy Friday, that a good number of them did focus specifically on the bioenergy resources. Recognizing the importance of efficiency first, which I'll get to, we also broke things down into home energy, farm energy, where we actually used some excellent material from North Dakota State. And then we also have a recent uh, folder on mobile home energy, recognizing some of the expertise up at Montana State University, where they were uniquely equipped to write something like that. And it adds up to um, over 11 folders. There's 100 fact sheets. There's a lot of lesson plans. It's a fairly extensive curriculum. OK, so where do we get started on it? So before we acknowledge that our educators themselves have different levels of expertise when it comes to providing education on energy, but we also recognize that the folks that we're going to be presenting to and interacting with, be it on a one-to-one -one level or a large group, also are going to have a different level of expertise and different goals that they're looking to get from their energy education experience. So the one thing we wanted to emphasize is, OK, so let's understand energy to begin with. And it, it, we start with these uh, a guide assessment then. And it's a, we call it actually our important scale survey. And you can hand this out. It can be done informally. It can be done formally. You can do it through turning point. There's lots of ways that you can approach this. But it allows you to assess your objectives, identify your information needs, identify faulty logic, i.e., what doesn't make sense here? What uh, am I coming at something where? Uh, everybody wanted to hear about this from a climate change perspective, and I'm not going to say that word at all, or vice versa. So really, to give information to the educator and which way to bring this information to their ultimate clientele. <clears throat> and as you look there, it allows the folks involved to rank it on importance. It also provides a useful level of feedback, so you know what uh, type of presentation you're going to be uh, giving. And it does acknowledge the fact that renewable energy and energy efficiency can be taught from several different platforms. If you look there, I know it's in a bit small print. Try the arrow here. We look at economic considerations. Uh, and by the way, like I said, I'm an economist, so I like economic, economic considerations. It sort of allows me to be agnostic in my discussion. Other people are very interested in independence. Independence, maybe they want to say to heck with their utility. Maybe they're a long ways from the grid. Uh, certainly concern for the environment can rank highly. And then there is an educational component or even technical fascination from which you can approach this. So by having this important survey up front, you can get a feel for what your audience is really looking for there. And I actually have to give credit. This is Sarah's brainchild. This is how she likes to think of things. Uh, for, a, for a guy like me, it's a, it's a little bit linear, but actually it has been quite appealing to many of our educators. So it's a guided exploration. <clears throat> so when you start, bring my arrow back up here again. So you, you get their objectives from that assessment. And then you find out what people are looking for. And let's just follow the first one here. So perhaps their objective is to save money right now. Uh, they want something that's got a great payback. Well, we'll show you the energy pyramid in a moment. But OK, so they want to save money right now. So let's point out how efficiency is generally a much more cost-effective investment, at least early on, than many types of alternative energy technologies. So maybe you gear your discussion to efficiency first, right here. And then does it come down, OK, have they got all the information they need? Uh, yep, then they can go out and get their energy audit and get it done. If no, they do not, OK, well, have we got specialists? Are there other folks that we can uh, bring into this discussion? Say it's a little bit more uh, involved assessment, something like irrigation efficiency. OK, are there other resources we can offer at our own institution or lean on other land grant institutions to get this done? And you can see that you could do this for each of uh, the objectives. And mind you, it makes you break it down into a primary objective. But it is very useful to guide <coughs> your way, one, as an educator, and two, as a, the ultimate uh, client through the 100 plus pages that are in this E3A curriculum. And here is the pyramid. Now, 
We have trained in Wyoming some uh, nutrition and food safety folks in energy. It actually fits very well, so I always get to have a joke at their expense here. I say we may, you know, we created the energy pyramid, and we base it on the fact that when the food pyramid actually made sense. And here, if you look, what we have is we want to start where we have the level of complexity and cost increasing as we go up. So the most basic thing that folks need to do is complete an assessment. You need to understand how you're using energy. I think. Many of you that are involved in energy, if you look at it on a personal level, uh, people are generally uh, not very well versed in how much energy they're using, what type of energy they're using, and where they're using energy. Now, I'm not saying that there has to be a full blower door test and a $2,000 audit done of a home or a full uh, uh, professional engineer study of uh, motors on an irrigation system, but people need to get a general idea of how they're using energy. And hey, the stuff in E3A can help you do that. And then from there, we take it up to conservation. And this is Jimmy Carter telling you to put on a sweater. Conservation is a change of behavior. So what things can you do that have a very low cost, in many cases that are free, that allow you to save, uh, save energy? So we want to do those behavioral change first. And now we want to make sure, by the way, that the behavioral changes don't impact the ultimate level of production. We have to acknowledge that energy use in its own right is certainly not a bad thing, as long as it allows you to get the most productive and efficient output that you can. So we do acknowledge conservation is the first way to go. And then we get up into efficiency. And here's where you're investing in technology, so you have lower inputs with the same amount of outputs. We understand that. There's many directions you can go with efficiency, but we do want to emphasize efficiency first. Matter of fact, we have a lot of fun. Say somebody walks in and says, I want to put in solar panels. Perhaps the very first question you should ask them is, how old is your refrigerator? So we really want to drive home to both our educators who are teaching this and then our ultimate clients that, hey, conservation and efficiency first. And then at the apex, not because it's best, but because it is generally the highest in complexity and cost, we look at alternative energy. And this is really what guides the uh, entire E3A curriculum. It seems very simple, and it is on the back of the box. But it is something, once again, that for our educators that haven't had much experience in energy, it's very reassuring when they're rooted in this concept. And actually, in uh, Wyoming and in Montana, some of the first things that our educators have presented is on this energy pyramid. So they'll give a little five-minute blurb before perhaps I or another uh, specialist comes in and gives a talk on a more detailed topic, but it allows them to gain a familiarity with energy issues. OK, so general concepts. Now, we recognize that energy can jump right into it and start talking about you know, how a photovoltaic array works, but there's perhaps a lot of things that people need to understand ahead of time. And it varies by the length, of course. And we'll talk about uh, how E3A can be customized for a five-minute overview or a whole day long session. <clears throat> but we do have uh, information in here on uh, general energy concepts. So for instance, uh, we have the energy pyramid. We talk about sources and uses, uh, like where our energy is coming from on a large scale. For instance, when someone says, uh, I'm going to put in a wind turbine to reduce uh, national oil consumption because I believe in energy independence. We talk about how those two really don't tie directly because uh, uh, obviously our electric grid is not directly, not significantly tied to our uh, importation of oil. So there's you know statistics from the Energy Information Administration in uh, relative to our source and uses. And by the way, as we get into some of these slightly more controversial topics, like any good university publication, this is resource based or research based. We do have references. Uh, we avoid advocacy groups. We truly, really try to make this an educational tool, not an advocacy tool. Because we do recognize that in extension, we could be doing our job when we give somebody the information that allows them to make an informed decision not to do something. It isn't just advancing uh, renewable energy and energy efficiency here. But other topics we go into, detail things like net metering, like what is off-grid, understanding green building technology. Those are uh, often buzzwords to really break down what is lead, what's an energy star building. We do have uh, worksheets where you can engage with your uh, ultimate clientele, where you can break down how you're using your own energy consumption. Once again, that brings you back to the assessment part, where you can even spend a session uh, talking about, hey, what does my utility bill mean? Why don't I just get charged an X amount? Why are there 10 things in my utility bill that I'm getting charged for? What's a demand charge? What's this energy efficiency charge? Why is there tier What's a tiered rate structure? You can uh, tailor that to have your specific local discussion. Uh, we'd be remiss if we didn't talk about carbon and energy. Now, we don't dwell on it. We did recognize our constituency. Remember, I'm, I'm sitting in an office in uh, Laramie, Wyoming. 
the leading coal producer in the country, number two or three in natural gas, seven or eight in oil. Uh, so we do recognize that climate change can be a controversial topic, but we do have a research base that we can pull from, so we did certainly want to discuss carbon and energy. And then also that important scale survey is in there as well. Then we get into the specific folders. And I'm not going to walk you through all, well, actually 10 of the folders, and it is expanding as well. I'll talk about that in a moment. But how is it broken down? So there is actually a folder, and this one is microhydro, kind of a specific topic very uh, relevant and actually getting a bit more attention in some ag circles. But you have a folder and it's broken down into a, uh, uh, their self-guide and it's a step-by-step -step process. So every single one of them ha has an introduction and then the next step, assessment, uh, varying levels of complexity. For instance, a micro hydro is much shorter than the solar electric because it's a little bit more of a specific topic. All of them have an economic consideration. It talks about incentives and then it has a conclusion, you know, uh, generally has something on maintenance. So it's a very step-by-step -step process. So if you're an educator out in the field and you know nothing about microhydro, somebody from an irrigation district comes in, you can pull out the folder, uh, very attractively labeled with a bunch of pictures of water. You know it's microhydro. And you can walk through the process there. Or you can provide these sheets uh, to your ultimate recipient, and they have a way to walk through the process. It gives them general information and then where they can go to get more information. And throughout the folders, it is a consistent format and content structures. So once you learn how to use one, you should be able to pull out any other of the folders. Uh, for instance, say someone comes in with a question on anaerobic digestion, probably not a question that, uh, well, maybe in Nebraska and other places that you get with fair frequency, but certainly not in Wyoming. Well, you do have information right there, and you can approach it very quickly. OK. <clears throat> And you can see on the side here, so now we have the solar hot water uh, <coughs> sheet. And you can see how the steps are detailed here. So one, there's an assessment. OK, it talks about that efficiency first, different types of systems, how to size it, what are the costs, how are they installed, and then operation and maintenance. <coughs> it really wants to, uh, early on, do that suitability check. You don't want to waste people's time. If this isn't something that is good for them, and you can see right here, do you have a self-facing roof? Or do you have enough space for collectors? OK, if you live in an apartment complex with uh, giant shade trees all around you, OK, maybe we can stop the discussion right there. You can save um, the client will appreciate that you're going to save their, their time. And then you also don't spend a lot of time into something that is clearly not feasible. So we'll work through in a question by question uh, process. <clears throat> and each of these, once again, that is detailed on the opening, uh, the opening sheet. So they do give a quick overview in the fact sheet. So you have a couple paragraphs that can give you a summary. And if then somebody's like, OK, I understand solar thermal. Let's move on. Or you can go into very, uh, when we say sufficient, we'll say quite detailed uh, information to allow people to truly make an informed decision. There's probably enough information in each of these folders for most uh, smaller scale applications. You can get a yes or no decision if this is something that your client should consider. OK, now we recognize that you know, shiny, uh, uh, shiny box, nice folders, and uh, hard copies are, are useful. And it is, I've got mine sitting on my shelf right here. And it does get used with quite a bit of regularity. But we wanted to have a bit more dynamic resource and also to be able to share some electronic resources. So we went ahead and created a website. It's actually at e3a4u.info. Don't worry, you'll get that uh, throughout. And on the website, I conveniently left my arrow out here. There is an overview video uh, if you just want to learn again what this is about. But throughout this, you can see that, OK, there is a section actually broken down for educators. And if you do go ahead and get a, order a box here, and you have to order them, uh, we subsidize the printing cost, but there is still a, a small cost for the box. You do also get a password. And then you can bring, you can access some of these electronic resources, such as PowerPoint presentations for each of the technologies, other electronic resources. Now, you may ask, why is there a password? Recognizing the controversy of this topic, strangely, and uh, especially in the states uh, in Montana and Wyoming, we wanted to make sure that it didn't end up in the hands of an advocacy group in one direction or another. Uh, you can either demonize efficiency and alternatives, or you could uh, put them up on a, on a pedestal that doesn't necessarily have the support. So by controlling initially who has access to it, one, we give 
extension, other land grant institutions, the first chance to, shall we say, seize a leadership role in energy education. But it also allows us to make sure that the content doesn't get warped and twisted and uh, you know, have an advocacy group out there presenting something with the University of Wyoming logo on it. I assure you, in my uh, split appointment with the School of Energy Resources would not, uh, would not be a good thing. So it is password protected for educators. Now with that being said, this can certainly be a uh, resource for the public. They can come in here and learn about the different technologies. Uh, we start with you know, understanding energy and, hey, look, uh, I think the, uh, the graphics are sort of self-explanatory, but each of the folders is also matched. So here's Micro Hydro. This little logo is on every folder with Micro Hydro. And you come here and you can click on it. You can learn a bit more about Micro Hydro, add a few more resources. We're going to add some videos uh, moving forward. And I'll talk about how we're going to uh, expand that. Understanding energy. There are some youth folders coming out. Those are primarily led by Montana State. Uh, they'll have a youth folder specifically dedicated to wind energy and specifically dedicated to solar energy. And those are really geared to our 4-H educators, where they can go out and have lesson plans already compiled already reviewed, and you know, there's a sort of a smattering of things out there right now, but they'll all be in one spot in that similar, uh, that familiar folder format. And also up here, we're working on regular blogs, podcasts, and it allows us to leverage information. For instance, if Montana State writes something, they're going to write it general enough that everyone in the western U.S. and perhaps across the country could use it. And same thing from Wyoming. Uh, so it allows us to share our information and leverage the uh, resources of uh, sister land grant institutions. So the website is uh, always evolving, as all websites are, but we do think we have uh, quite a few robust resources up there. And by the way, if you don't want to buy a uh, box, you can download all the sheets here as well. So all the information is out there and transparent. Okay. So there's a user guide supplement as well. So we recognize that we give all this information, and it could be turned over to our ultimate clients and just say, OK, read these step by steps and uh, you know, have at it. But we also recognize that we wanted to empower our field educators and our on-campus specialists, if they wanted to, to teach. So we uh, have a three-ring binder that is geared towards the actual teaching of it. And we call it the user guide supplement. So here, for example, is a section on small win. And say you've got uh, 15 minutes. Maybe you're presenting to, I don't know, a rotary group or something like that, a little lunchtime presentation. And your focus is the key considerations of uh, wind system ownership. OK, so you identify your learning objectives, what the participants will get out of it. And then from there, we recognize that, OK, everything is labeled in here. So what handout should I have for them? All right, let's, let's get that uh, energy pyramid out there. Let's get the checklist, and then maybe we'll have an evaluation form. And once again, you can pick and choose, but it is all canned and ready to go. It recommends other things that you should have ready to go, if necessary, how you should prepare for the session. And it can even break down, for instance, if, uh, if you're going to have a guest speaker or anything like that, once again, give uh, guidance on how you can evaluate the technical expertise, nothing like inviting a guest speaker and finding out they really don't know what they're talking about, or perhaps they take more of an advocacy role. So all that information will be there in preparing for the session. <clears throat> and we can even break it down further, I'll just keep the arrow out here, in what Sarah has uh, affectionately uh, designated a grab-and-go lesson plan. All right, you don't have a whole lot of time to go out and create something, and also perhaps not the expertise to just create something from scratch on wind energy without randomly pulling stuff from the internet. Well, here you go. <clears throat> here's a breakdown of a 15-minute workshop. Here's a breakdown of a sample 30-minute workshop. And the idea is this may get somebody through their first workshop or two, and then they can begin to customize it as they, their level of uh, comfort increases. So it is certainly uh, uh, a way for people to, should we say, sort of enter into the E3A curriculum. And you can see that it even adds, all right, so you want to vary it a little bit. What could I do? Uh, hey, how about a webinar component from uh, your extension energy specialist? Get John uh, wrangled in and say, John, we need you to uh, bring this into the discussion because we've decided to alter the format. And you're able to do that. <clears throat> now here we talk about the guest speaker because so often with energy, we do have guest speakers, be it installers, be it uh, you know, farmer or rancher that already has something like a solar-powered uh, livestock watering system, uh, somebody who's done significant levels of irrigation efficiency. <clears throat> well, here you look out. Look at, uh, it's a ready-made form. 
and it allows people to make sure that what they're presenting doesn't go into that advocacy realm again, once again. You can see how hard we're trying to, uh, or how much we're endeavoring to make sure that we don't end up in that uh, pigeonhole into that advocacy corner. So it is a uh, confirmation form, and it's uh, for each of the technologies. It'll be uh, specifically designated. So here you can see it's for micro hydropower. And here's the basic information that we want them to share. And you provide your contact information, and lo and behold, you're good to go. And it should make it easier, once again, uh, lower, uh, lower effort to create an energy workshop. We wanted to make this as accessible as possible to the field educators. <clears throat> OK, now like any good uh, extension program, after you're all said and done, you're going to need to evaluate it. Now, you can just use your standard evaluation. This isn't meant to replace uh, something that folks already have. But if you want something specifically related to energy, well, here we go. And uh, how this works, down, works is before the class, people rate their level of understanding. And then you rate after the class. So this is something that we were able to report to Western SAIR, how much uh, improvement we found. In, we could even be training our own educators. So if they started out low and ended up somewhere a bit higher, well, great. We've, uh, we've uh, succeeded in uh, at least doing something with the time. Uh, and then also, it allows people to check if there's interest in other topics. So pretty standard evaluation form. And it also links to an Excel, Excel, excuse me, an Excel spreadsheet that allows you to tabulate it. And there is the first time you're going to see that. And you'll see it many more times. It's the e3a4u.info. And it's jointly branded right now by University of Wyoming and Montana State. And these are all under Tools for Teachers. OK. Nothing like having an event, putting all this work into it, although hopefully we've made it a bit easier, and not getting anyone to show up. So uh, Montana State really led the effort on this, as they were having uh, some challenges at the time uh, with their press and promotion. So there's standard press and promotion tools out there. So you want a standard press release on uh, some of these energy topics. Well, great, they're right there in uh, teacher tools, uh, little blurbs that can be inserted in newspapers. Hopefully a good place for you to start. There's things to guide uh, how to submit radio. And once again, many of you in conservation districts, extension, or other folks that are involved in teaching will have had experience with this. But once again, we wanted to make it easy and approachable. So that's in there as well. OK, so when we are engaging faculty in energy, so what is working and why is it working? Well, one, I'd say that there's a variety of teaching methods available. If you like to do a standard PowerPoint lecture, webinar, well, great. We have those keen and ready to go. Feel free to modify them. Uh, feel free to contact your energy specialist and get specific slides inserted. Now, a lot of folks do a, a fair number of one-on-one -on -one education. And it might be out when they're uh, out on a rangeland visit, visit and want to talk about uh, solar-powered livestock watering systems. So it could be that one-on-one. -on -one. Well, the information's right there to, OK, let's walk through this type of system for you. So it allows people to engage in that one-on-one -on -one or small group dis discussion. Now, another method that requires a bit more uh, investment in time is a uh, demonstration project. And I'll show you a picture, but Wyoming has an energy trailer, which we drag around. We've recently refurbished. It's a nice place for people to have a very tangible way to talk about these technologies. Some people like to look at them uh, you know, to be able to you know, look at the nuts and bolts behind the system. And on this uh, trailer, we have a solar thermal, solar electric, uh, solar powered livestock watering system, model an on-grid and off-grid system, and also just put a uh, ground source heat pump on there as well. So we have uh, uh, sort of physical uh, ways for people to teach the technology, which can still integrate with the E3A curriculum. We're going to walk through solar electric. We'll stand next to the trailer and walk through the sheets. And uh, in Wyoming, or excuse me, in Montana, they have some very effective demonstration kit. So they're just trunks, everything from lighting efficiency to insulation. Say you want to give something as an aside that's a hands-on, maybe as a side presentation at a fair or another event, well, great, you can order the kit. <clears throat> and uh, the hope is that you can catch people at all levels of energy expertise, from um, folks that know nothing about electricity all the way up to those who are uh, a certified energy manager can probably gain something from these different ways that are able to teach us. Now, just so you see what these demonstration trailers look like, uh, this is a recent version of our uh, trailer in Wyoming. You can see the uh, panels, and the wind turbines up there as well, and a pump. I actually just replaced a pump. For those of you into uh, solar-powered livestock watering, 
That's a uh, Grunfoss pump on the side there, and I just replaced it with something smaller and lighter. And then I, here's the learning labs out of Montana State. So for instance, they have an electric meter, and you get to plug different types of light bulbs in it. Seems pretty basic, right? Uh, I've been around when they're using this. People are fascinated by this, where you really get to see what a CFL does, see what an LED does, and be able to compare it and get something tangible. You know, Even if it's just as tangible as watching an electric meter spin slower, you begin to understand how energy efficiency works. And you can do this with a lot of different things. And they also do it with uh, specific renewable energy technologies, like solar hot water or solar photovoltaics. OK, so now we get to the part on how can you begin to use it. One, you could just go to the website and start pulling uh, down stuff. But we uh, want to allow uh, different states to take it to a higher level of engagement. Uh, Wyoming and Montana State, we went through the, shall we say, rather a laborious uh, licensing agreement where we each licensed it back and forth. It was jointly controlled by Montana State University and University of Wyoming and through Western SARE. But we went and made it more or less uh, open source. It allows other land-grant institutions. It's easiest for a, uh, another university to do this, although we could certainly talk about having a conservation district or others. But the license agreement is now a canned operation and allows individual states to modify and brand the material. So you can, uh, all the UW logos and Montana State logos are stripped off it. So you could brand it. You just have to reference where it came from, a you know, standard academic process here. And uh, it is royalty-free, non-exclusive agreement. You want it, go ahead and use it. Uh, we feel that educational material is only a benefit if it's getting used. And from our own selfish motivation, we figure if people are going to use it, they're going to update it, they're going to add to it, and that may enhance our programming as well, because we certainly do not have expertise in all these topics. So we're always interested in contribution from others. If you want to write an article, you want to provide a podcast, you shot a video. And really, as we develop a community of folks using it, Say you're going out and shooting a video, you can do one briefly that's, shall we say, state specific. And then just step back and maybe give something more general, like uh, we did this on solar powered livestock watering, where we just talk about how the systems work, not specifically relating them to Wyoming. So where are we at right now? Six states have currently licensed to modify the materials, and there's at least three others that have got their uh, applications in right now. Uh, we did go out and find another grant uh, to strip uh, all the copyright out of it, and also to get general licensing for all the images in there. So all the images are fully licensed, good to go. Uh, it is a, shall we say, a legally tight package. We did. We have had 18 states come that have uh, gotten trained into teaching the material, held some uh, events up in Montana State, came and spent a couple days walking through the materials, allow you to have some practice teaching sessions, and really get comfortable with the materials. And our idea, once again, it's available to extension first. Uh, because it is an easier license agreement, but also we wanted to give Extension the first chance to be an expert in the you know, agricultural energy realm. So if you want to work with your conservation districts, we've had a specific training for uh, NRCS. We can certainly, you can certainly do that, but uh, we wanted to give Extension the first whack at it. Okay, and in other good news, there's more coming to E3A. Uh, Western Sarah liked it enough that they gave it a subsequent grant a sort of a follow-on grant. And with this, we're going to add a few new folders. The folders will talk about one of my favorites, ground source heat pumps, geothermal heat pumps, as they're also known. We'll talk about direct-use geothermal. Some of the western states, in particular, have access to you know, a, a hot water resource that can be used for uh, different things, such as district heating, greenhouses. We wanted to be able to talk about that. Once again, a very specific topic, but could be quite relevant to ag. We've recognized, and it's really been a popular topic among our educators, uh, to have the solar-powered livestock watering system discussion. So we want to have a folder, and actually New Mexico has gone out, and, and they're one of the six states licensed to use it, have developed something already, and we're going to simply convert that into a, the E3A uh, folder format. Then also we're looking at irrigation efficiency. So we're adding new content, but we're also recognizing that there were some gaps in how we're able to deliver this information. So one of them, forgive my trademark infringement, but it's a Skype and expert. So we recognize that educators are perhaps comfortable going out and presenting from the, the packets, so, or from the folders, rather. So you get to the end of a 30-minute presentation, and lo and behold, you've got an installer there who pigeonholes you with an expertise question and is really, uh, that's really above your head uh, for our, many of our field educators, which is all fairness, because they haven't had the educational background in energy. 
Well, that's very uncomfortable, and it can hurt the credibility of extension on the field. So what we've devised is Skype an expert, where you set your time of the program, tell us what it's about, and then a specialist will be available to uh, answer questions at the end. So at the beginning of the presentation, you can say, all right, Milton Geiger will be joining us to help address any questions at the end of our presentation. And I'd see the presentation as it was going along, as I'm sitting in my office, and then at the end of the presentation, if there's something that is a little bit more involved, well, great, it can come to me and I can help address that question. Or I can say that, hey, we don't know the answer, but we can go to other land-grant institutions and find that answer. So it gives an extra level of security for folks that are presenting. We're going to increase our uh, number of podcasts. We're going to have a bunch of topical short videos, you know, 30-second to a minute videos on things like, OK, what is uh, hydroelectric head? What is hydroelectric flow? Uh, what's the difference between 100 gallons per minute and 10 cubic feet per second? So people can get a visual representation. So uh, we're going to have a significant number of videos on that that can either be incorporated into presentations or just used as a general teaching tour. Uh, we're going to have a uh, significant webinar series. And we're hoping that these are, whoops, that's supposed to be brown bag, although maybe we can browbeat people to attend. And uh, it's 20 to 30 minutes where we focus on a very specific topic, say something like solar shading or uh, turbulence and wind, where you can get a high level of information on one specific topic as opposed to these general discussions. We did that with the previous grant. We found that those were less effective. So we want to have very specific, quick discussions. A lot of website enhancements. And then the other thing is we hope to train some more states. And uh, some of the Western states can actually receive a subsidized on-site training. And I'll say that we're always looking for friends to play with here. If uh, your state or you're interested in something like this, we welcome a cooperation. Uh, E3A really isn't University of Wyoming or Montana states anymore. We would like it to be a Western region, and it's even spread out across the country and allowed other people to contribute materials to it. OK, now with that, uh, there's once again the website, e3a4u.info. You can get all you want to know and more about the Exploring Energy Efficiencies and Alternative Curriculum. And there's my contact information. Always happy to address any questions about this. Get to know my energy colleagues around the uh, country. So feel free to shoot me an email or give me a ring. And if you do want to explore licensing, you can go to the website. And there's a link for that. Or you can just contact myself directly uh, or Sarah Hamlin as well. And once again, I do want to credit her with all the wonderful work that uh, Sarah put into this project as well. This webinar has been brought to you by the Farm Energy Community of Practice and the University of Nebraska Lincoln Extension. For more information, go to farmenergymedia.extension.org.